Okay, we just got done playing Kanban Automotive Revolution, which is a new game from Stronghold and Vital Lacerda. It is a giant, disgusting, but awesome looking mess. Uh, I can't really explain the rules in 30 seconds, but basically you are moving your little worker guy in these time spaces. And you can see like this time space here is associated with this area, which is all about getting car parts. And these different cubes equal different car parts. You're gonna use those cubes to push down the cars and they go through this little uh, conveyor belt thing. They get out here on the track where you're gonna test them. So you wanna get the cubes, so you go there, and then you go here to push the cubes out, and then you go here to test designs. Well, you're gonna get designs over here, and the designs over here will upgrade certain car parts to the cars. So now, if a car's been upgraded, like for example, I upgraded these here, now these require these cubes. So a yellow requires a pink cube before it can move, so you add some requirements to those things. And then you move this around, and when this little pace car hits the checkered board, we move this big old block over there to have a meeting, and this is really my favorite part of the game. These are little end of meeting bonuses, but everybody has a hand of these, and so you're trying to put out like the least cool bonus cards for the other players to get. And then you unlock these little chairs, these seats at the meeting, so you can just picture like middle management like bickering and you know trying to make excuses and make themselves look good. Uh, so you got designs, and there's some little funky Vitaliserta types of uh, turn order things where you get little bonuses as you move up and it gives you priority in the meetings. Um, I thought it was really good. So Dan is back with us. <laughs> what do you think of it, Dan? Well, I'm a big fan of Vitos, so I was really looking forward to trying this game. I think it's safe to say that all of us were sort of wandering around a bit in a fog through a good chunk of this game because there is just so much going on, so much to keep track of. Um, it's a busy, busy board. I'm not quite sure how I finished to score what I did, but I think it, a lot of it is going to come down to timing because I was behind most of the game and then right towards the end I just cranked out a whole bunch of cars and I think that really was uh, the game changer as far as I was concerned. It's um, It got easier. It, it didn't take as long as we thought it was going to. It was, it took about two hours. Yeah, about two hours. Um, it was looking pretty daunting right at the beginning, but once you start figuring out how all the parts fit together, uh, it, it was moving pretty quickly. It's just a question of timing yeah. uh, as far as when you do the things you do, and in that regard, it's a lot like Vino's. You just, when you enter the wine in the state fair, or the wine fair, it makes a big difference as to how you're going to do, and I think same thing as far as which position you choose at what time is going to be very beneficial or it's just going to blow up in your face. Uh, really looking forward to playing this again as soon as Joel picks it up. <laughs> okay, Eric, what do you think? So, um, I think definitely overwhelming at the beginning. There's a lot of moving parts here. Um, I'm not sure I quite think it's fun yet. I think that, was, that first game is a lot of work. Um, but I think a couple more plays, I would definitely play it again, you know, so it's good enough to kind of make that jump to like, oh, I want to do this again. And, and after a few of the rounds, you know, it felt like I was starting to get a hang of it and realized all the mistakes I'd made at the beginning. So, yeah, I don't have much more to add. You can sum it up pretty good. Yep. And Zach. Uh... Yeah, I don't have much to add either. It was tough to figure out at first. I can't imagine trying to read the rules and actually explain it. So yeah, that was. I don't look forward to explaining it again. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, and it took about half the game to figure out what was going on. But uh, now that I understand, I'm, I'm ready to play it again. Yep. The one thing that's interesting uh, that Dan was kind of getting at was when you go to here as a worker placement action, you can see that one will give you two shifts, and then this one here. Uh, we'll give you three shifts. So you have those shifts and you spend those to do different actions in the spot, like add cubes, collect cubes, add cards, do different things. Well, you can get other things that'll bonus, uh, give you bank shifts that you can bonus. So you can spend those like at the right time to kind of beef up your actions and stuff like that. And then you get like certifications in all these departments. So there's a track there, there's a track there, there's a track there. And these certifications will help you unlock. So at the beginning of the game, you don't have a lot of stuff you can do. So you 
spend a lot of your excess shifts moving up these certifications that unlock things on your player board and give you more things that you can do. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it again. I'm not super looking forward to explaining it again, <laughs> but I think I'll get the hang of it. So, anyway, uh, anybody who likes Venus, I think will really like it.